okay, so I wanted to redo a portion of this video because as Vlada pointed out, and he's absolutely correct, um, I did not mention anything about field rotation. So I'm going to take a minute to explain what that is and why it matters. Um, when you have a device on a tripod um, and it's just sitting flat and leveled, the sky is rotating above you. Now, if you're going to take accurate images of the sky through a telescope, you use what's called a polar alignment, which means the rotation of the scope has been aligned to the North Star or the pole of the Earth, which means it rotates, it spins as the apparent, you know, what, what the sky is doing appears to spin, which is actually the Earth spinning. So having said this, when you take a still, say we took six hours worth of stills of, of the moon to see what the, rot the tilt was doing, that would mean over that six hour period, and I'm just doing the math in my head, we would have to roughly rotate that last image 90 degrees, and you can look up exactly what it is, I'm sure it's a fraction, but there's going to be roughly 90 degrees of rotation because you're not aligned to the pole of the Earth. So having said that, um, I'll add a little more as I get into the following images where I show the old footage. Okay, so what I've done here is gone back and grabbed uh, an image um, back in August 2012. I think it's the second. You're looking at Kepler. That's the big one. And the one I circled first is Aristarchus. Um, what I did was I went and I drew a line through those two craters, just roughly eyeballed. It's not perfect or exact. And then um, I have another image that was taken a few days back um, in 2014. And uh, here it is. You can tell that the moon's much further away now. It's smaller. Um, I didn't resize it. If I did, it's not going to affect the angle a lot. But that doesn't really matter either, and I'll tell you why. So I drew a line through that. Um, so the simple way, basically the very rough simple way to do this, because it's not exact by any means, is to just grab a protractor, um, which I do here, slap it on, and you're looking at a measurement of 36 degrees. But, um, and I thank Vlada again, what I failed to mention in the first posting of this is um, I'm using an alt azimuth mount, which means I'm not polar aligned, which means for this 36 degrees, which is just meant to get you thinking about the differences you see in the moon, um, would actually take quite a few calculations to see what the difference is. And the moon is on an 18 point something year cycle, which also would have to be considered. Um, in a single night, the moon is expected to tilt 7.7 .7 degrees, I believe. That's off the top of my head. But what we're looking at here are two images shot in alt azimuth, no polar alignment, which means there's field rotation. And here's the two images side by side. And uh, I'll circle out the craters here in a second. There's both Kepler's, both Aristarchus's. Now, these were shot at similar times of night, but again, the, moon, the moon's on an 18-year cycle, and these are shot without a polar alignment, which means over a six-hour period, you're going to get roughly, and this is roughly, I'm sure it's a fraction, I'm doing this off the top of my head, you're going to get 90 degrees of field rotation, something like that, in the neighborhood of 90 de degrees which means if you want to measure what the tilt of the moon's doing, you would have to shoot it over six hours and then derotate, compensating for the 90 degrees that's going to happen over that period, and then do the math and see if you're getting the expected fraction of 7.7 .7 degrees of tilt. Now, a lot of people are reporting that it looks funny. I have noticed myself that things seem a little funny, but don't always trust your eyes. Um, anyhow, thanks Vlad for pointing out my obvious omission, and here's the new version.